why won't my hang on don't record yet because now I can't there we go. Okay, so welcome to resumes 101. Uh, thanks for coming today. We have a pretty good crowd. So that's great. Um, we'll, oops, my thing is going crazy. Hang on. Let's go back. There we go. So uh, to start again, what is a resume? Okay. So a resume in short is a demonstration of your qualifications and suitability for the type of position or employment that you're seeking. Okay. It outlines your education, your experience, and your skills. It's also a summary of your abilities, accomplishments, and attributes. And we're gonna go into this in a little bit more detail. And this is really important. It's your opportunity to stand out from other applicants. So you wanna use it to the best of your ability. Uh, here's some just overarching tips for you to keep in mind when you are composing your resume. Don't think of it as a list of job descriptions, but you want to think of it as a list of successes, skills, and strengths. Some people go into great detail describing what they did, and it's better to focus more on sort of a summary of the skills you were utilizing and um, if there were any positive successes during that experience for you to highlight those. You don't need to list every single thing that you did. You want to think about how you did your job as opposed to what you did. Uh, in terms of the what, you really want to focus, like I said above, on the skills, not so much the duties, unless the duties are really implying a skill. So your resume should be visually pleasing. Uh, you want it to be consistent, consistent, concise, and professional. Uh, you also want to leave some white space on there, keep it uncluttered. And the rule is generally one to two pages, but those pages should be full. So you don't wanna do one and a half pages. Um, they should be full pages. So if you're getting like one and a quarter, you, you're gonna wanna see how you can be a little more concise and get that onto one full page. This is important. Um, think about information architecture. You want to create a hierarchy and, and a structure to your resume and stick to it. Dates have one format, job titles have a format, places of employment have their own format, and you want to repeat that structure through your resume so it's really easy for the viewer to find the information they're looking for. You want to focus on skills and experience that are relevant. And when I say relevant, I mean relevant to the particular job that you are applying for, and you really want to punch those points. And the best way to do this is I usually recommend people create a master resume. So that means everything that you've ever done. And it doesn't matter how long that resume is because you're not going to use it. You're going to use that resume as a starting point because you're going to customize it for each specific job that you're applying for. So it'll get into that one or two full pages by the time you're submitting it. And I'm going to do a little demo on this a little bit later so you can kind of see a um, an example of, of how to do this. Okay, there's a few different types of resumes. Uh, chronological resume that lists all experience in reverse chronological order. So that means the most recent job first and then moving back in time. Uh, functional resume, and that's where you split things out into um, headings like communication skills and other kinds of skills, and um, followed by a list of places that you worked, and you would also have education there, but we'll go through what order you would place things in a minute. Um, most often, I would recommend a combination of the above. So you're going to list most recent first, but you're going to separate things out into different categories. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so starting from the top, generally, of your resume, this is what you want to include. A correct contact uh, listing for yourself. And that includes your name, your address, your email. You want to put your uh, links to your online presence there. Not necessarily social media, but more like your online portfolio. Um, make sure you list a phone number and make sure that somebody can leave a message at that phone number. Um, you don't want somebody to call and your messages are full. 
uh, then you're, there's a sentence or a listing that happens right under your contact info that I'm going to call highlights of qualifications. This used to be sort of a career objective. That, that's a category that it, 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 we're sort of moving away from now. It seems like what's more helpful in that space now is what I'm referring to as a career profile. Uh, you can call it a professional summary. You can call it a, a professional statement, something like that. And it's really can be a sentence that sort of demonstrates your suitability for the job that you're applying for and uh, with, that you're using that resume for. And I've got some examples um, that I'll show you. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Uh, then you're going to want to list your education. You do not need to put your high school on there. Um, high school completion is implied by the fact that you're listing uh, your post-secondary education. And you can put your current degree up there. You can just project the graduation date forward, or you could put to present, wh whichever you want. Okay, skills is usually the next heading you can get to. And I, this is a category that a lot of people miss, and it's a really key part of your resume. And this is where you can really punch up in point form how you match the skills that they're looking for on the job posting. And that's really, really important to do. Then they can find it really easily. It's not buried in a description below a job somewhere. Uh, you're gonna list your experience. And this is, uh, it can be job experience, but it can also be other types of experience. So um, sometimes what's helpful is to separate this experience section out into related or relevant experience and additional experience. What this does is it, it really helps you pull the most relevant experience right up front and center for the viewer to find instead of it being buried down there in a reverse chronological order. Um, you can still go in reverse chronological order, but you know, you might be working at Starbucks and you don't want that to be the first thing that they see. It's super valid and valuable to show that you worked at Starbucks. There's a lot of good skills that you gain working um, in frontline service like that. But now you can move Starbucks down lower in the document to additional experience. And I'll, I'll show you later what I mean by that. Uh, you can totally include class projects and collaborations, whether they were for credit or not. Um, just your own projects that you're working on. And that really helps if you feel like you don't have a lot of related experience, you do actually have related experience. It's just not in the form of, uh, of a professional job. So um, I, I demo that in some later you'll see. It, and it doesn't matter if you were paid. It's okay to list things as relevant experience, even if you weren't paid. Um, you want to put some volunteer experience there if you have some. Um, it's always positive to include volunteer experience in your resume. It, it looks good. And then you might have some additional information that you want to list there. Um, achievements and certifications you might have that are relevant to the position. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about skills. Okay, so I've put together some lists of skills, uh, skill sets, and and don't don't get overly focused on how I've titled them. You you may want to title them in a way that works best for that job posting, and uh, uh, and you'll see what I mean. But you know, for example, here's some example of some good communication skills that you might want to list. Um, I won't read them all out. Um, it might be helpful to highlight team and leadership skills if that's something that uh, they're looking for in the job posting. Um, critical thinking skills. These are really good. And, you know, with your education at Emily Carr, don't underestimate these. These are very valuable skills to highlight in a job application. They're really, really um, hireable skills in the, in the work market. Um, here's some organizational skills that you might want to highlight. Uh, some more. Now, these are also things I, I often see students in my advising that are, are forgetting to list these types of skills. So uh, I'm just going to pull them all up here. But um, on the left here, you can see creative skills and studio skills. Um, you could even combine these and say creative and studio skills and then list, uh, you know, a combo of things, but these are really great. Um, you know, collaboration, which was in the last slide, is a great one. 
Um, you know, the fact that everybody experiences um, critique here, that's really valuable in the workplace that you know how to effectively take feedback and incorporate it into your work. It's really important skills, so don't forget about that. And then there's um, obviously, um, sometimes you can list software skills as technical skills and maybe combine it with the studio skills. Um, and I've, I've put some interpersonal skills there too. Take your cues from the job posting as to what skills you think you could best highlight. You don't want a list of like 30 things. You just want sort of highlights. Um, okay, so let's get into some example resumes. Okay, this is in our handout and I, I'm gonna put the handout in the chat. It's called How to Get Hired and we have another one called Resume Builder. Um, at the very end, I'll put it in the chat um, so that you can download it from there, but you can also download it from the resource section in Artswork. Um, they're, they're all there too. So this is an example of a resume that um, is for somebody very early still in their education. They really don't have any relevant professional experience. So um, I've kind of added these categories of, um, you know, this is, this is kind of skills, but I've, I've listed, this is a student who's focusing on animation and illustration. I've even listed relevant coursework here because there isn't a lot of work to list yet. Uh, notable projects here. Um, I've, the skills are here, but I've just focused on um, computer that could actually say software skills and studio skills. Um, and some leadership skills here uh, are good to mention because they happen to be in this person's wheelhouse. And you see here how I've moved the, you know, the London Drugs and JJ Bean experience way down here into additional. It's still valuable, but if I used just uh, experience as one category, then they would be way up there at the top. And they, they would be some of the first things that the, um, the viewer would see. So they're valuable, but now we can move them down here so that because all of this is relevant to professional creative work. And this is just kind of a bonus. So um, that's just kind of a demo of that. Um, here's somebody who is um, in design. And um, just a small note about design resumes. It's good to highlight your design skills in a design resume. And I mean, I'm not a designer, so don't judge me on this one, but I was kind of attempting to do that. But you just wanna make sure that you don't over design it. You don't want the design to overshadow the information that you want people to find. Okay, so I've listed here skills and ability and technical skills, and I've kind of combined software and studio skills in here. Um, and then here's the degree, the education listed, and you can see how the information, oh, I've gone forward, sorry. You can see how the information here is very easy to find, you know, if for somebody viewing it. They don't have to like do this deep diagnostic into the um, resume to find the information that they're looking for. Uh, this is actually, this is kind of a uh, visual arts resume, and it's a hybrid between uh, an artist CV and a professional resume. So this would be if you're in visual arts and you want to apply to internships and art related jobs. And you can see how at the bottom, the select exhibitions uh, are listed very much like an artist CV. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about artist CVs uh, later. Um, but the professional experience section is, it follows more of a format of a resume. You know, it's got freelance work, it's got student monitor work for Emily Carr, that kind of thing, but it's listed more like a resume than an artist's CV. And the studio expertise is right front and center, even above the education there. Okay, just a couple of things to keep in mind that you do not want to put on your resume. Um, you don't want to put your age, your gender, your nationality, or a picture of yourself. Um, you know, it's fine to put your pronouns, I think. Um, but I think that these types of categories are in, certainly in Europe and other places, these are standard. But in North America, it's not standard to have this information on a resume. You wouldn't include it. So if you're applying for positions in North America, you wouldn't want to include that kind of information. Um, references. So some people put references on their resume. That's not where they belong. 
Um, there used to be a sort of a trend of putting at the bottom of your resume references available upon request. That trend seems to have um, faded. So you don't need to uh, list anything to do with references on your resume, but what you do wanna do is prepare a separate sheet that lists your references, uh, name, title, place of employment, phone number, and email. And if you are applying for positions, just reach out to the, the folks on that document and make sure that they know they might get a call. Um, you might wanna send them the copy of the resume um, that you're using for that application. And you might wanna give them a line or two about, oh, this is maybe even send them the job description just so that they're ready for a call um, if, if, uh, if you're being shortlisted. Um, okay, customizing your resume. This We talked about this earlier and this is kind of a demo. It's important to remember that the resume doesn't get you the job. It, it gets you shortlisted, hopefully for an interview, or at least for the first stage before an interview, could be a phone call. Um, the number of resumes that employers receive for postings can be over a hundred or more. Um, you know, some of the pretty hot internships, they could easily get hundreds or over a thousand applications. So please keep in mind that your resume is gonna get like a 30 second scan this is why it's so important that you're punching the information that they're looking for and not making them look for it because they might miss it. You know, imagine reviewing a hundred resumes yourself after like the 20th, you're scanning seriously. Um, sometimes resumes are scanned by shortlisting software. So this is why it's so important to look through the job posting for the keywords and phrases uh, that, that show you what the employer is looking for. Um, and then you're going to repeat these in your resume, because if it is being scanned by software, you're going to want to make sure it picks up those keywords and phrases. Okay, here's a job posting. This is, we're going to kind of work through this. So this is for um, a design intern at BC Children's Hospital. And this job was up on arts work a couple of weeks ago. Um, so what the exercise I would recommend is that you go through and you highlight what you interpret as the keywords in that job posting. So I've done that. You'll find those in the job description. You'll find it in the list of qualifications that they're looking for. And then sometimes they list, uh, you don't have to have this, but it's a bonus, kind of that nice to have. So I would certainly highlight those two and see if there's any way, if I have that experience that I can demonstrate it in my resume. So from that, I make myself a list of these things. And then this is kind of my roadmap for editing my master resume down um, to make sure that I've included all of these things and, and used some of the keywords that they're looking for. So remember our graphic design um, resume example. So now you go through your own resume and you highlight where you've mentioned it. And then you just go ahead and put a tick next to your list of keywords that was on the previous slide. You may want to rephrase some things like you might notice at the top here, um, emerging visual designer with a focus on innovative brand connection uh, creation. I've, I've edited that and I've changed it to emerging design methodologies and technology because they mention that in the job description. So it's a different way of saying the same thing, but I'm going to use their words. Uh, same with down below under the find me infographic here. Um, you know, a group project created an infographic as part of a group project. I've changed group project to team because they use the word team like three times in that job posting. So I'm going to use their term. Um, then I'm going to go back after I've worked everything in and I'm going to do another pass. So I can see that anything that is not highlighted, I've worked that in. And then I'm going to look and say, oh, I missed a few. So at that point, I can work those into my resume or I can say, OK, I'm going to mention that in my cover letter then instead. Um, the ones in yellow were those nice to have. So I don't need to worry if I don't have that experience. I don't need to speak to it because it was just something that they mentioned would be a bonus. OK, now we're going to talk just a little bit about CVs as opposed to resumes. So a CV would contain information um, that would not generally be listed on a resume. So academic and professional information like 
publications, award scholarships, um, or grants you received, teaching experience, any workshops, courses, programs that you taught, even if that was at a day camp or something, it's still valuable. Um, some, you know, if you had any professional memberships, organizations or affiliations that you were a part of, you would list those on your CV. Uh, you would also list content that is public that would not necessarily be listed on your resume, like um, your exhibitions. And you can list those group exhibitions, solo exhibitions, uh, select exhibitions, um, however you want, whatever seems um, to work best for the, the scope of experience you have with exhibitions. Um, screenings and film festivals, if you are in film or animation, you would list those here. Uh, any residencies you'd participated in, commissions, uh, collections that, um, you know, if, if someone had purchased your work, and um, collaborations and projects, like, for instance, a public art project, a mural or something like that, you would list that on your CV. A um, couple of example CVs. So here's an artist CV of someone who just uh, finished fourth year. So, um, you know, uh, it's good to get involved in, um, just gonna, sorry, my phone is ringing, I apologize. Um, it's, it's good to get involved in things while you're in school. Uh, everybody participated in the foundation show, so you can definitely put that down. Um, you know, the Woo newsletter letter is always looking for submissions, so that's a great thing for you to submit your work to, and then it's a great thing that you can list on your CV. A uh, couple of honors and awards down there at the bottom. Uh, this is one with more of a, um, a film focus. So, um, and it's, it's actually a little bit more of a hybrid because you can see it has the professional statement there at the top um, and some um, technical skills and things like that, but it includes um, awards and achievements. So um, it's, it's a bit, little bit more of a hybrid. Uh, it really depends on what the job posting is asked for. Sometimes they will specifically ask for a CV. Um, an artist CV or something like that. So, um, but don't be afraid to hybridize, hybridize it a little bit like this. Um, before we finish, I'll just say a little bit about your application as a whole, things to keep in mind. Um, it's really important that you read the application thoroughly. Look for instructions and make sure that they follow it. If they've asked for things, uh, if they've, they've asked for links, make sure you give them links. Um, and if they've asked for specific formats, then give them that. Make sure that you follow the instructions. Um, you definitely want to begin early and apply early. Uh, don't start your application the day it's due. You won't have time to review it. And, and um, also, it's really important to note that certain postings may have a closing date, but often they will close early if they reach their threshold of applications. So don't wait till the last minute. It's good to just get right on that and get that in early. We even have postings on arts work where um, the job appears, we post it, and then it disappears and we have to pull it down. And we've estimated a, a closing date because the, the job didn't list one. So just be aware of that. Definitely reread and uh, read and reread the position. Um, that exercise earlier, I can't stress it enough. You want to make sure that you've addressed the skills and experience that they've asked for in your application. Um, it's really important to send your resume and cover letter and examples of your work if they ask for that as one PDF all is one PDF to avoid people having to download and, and keep opening different documents. If, if, if you have 200 applications, that's a huge time waste for them. Um, you should always include a cover letter with your resume. Uh, it may not be requested in the job posting, but it is implied and it really does give you an advantage over the other applications that didn't include one. Um, we are offering a presentation on cover letters tomorrow presented by our director, Shannon McKinnon. So I really uh, encourage everyone to attend that one too. Uh, if you can't, then we are going to hopefully put that up in, on the Arts Work Resources page as well. So you can, you can watch the video later. 
Um, I can't stress this enough either, proofread your application and get somebody else to read it. Um, you tend to miss your own typos, uh, so it's really important for someone else to, um, to look at it. It can be a friend, a family member, the writing center will review them, and also us. Uh, you can make one-on-one -on -one appointments uh, with us, um, but don't send it to me if it's due at four o'clock and you send it to me in 3.30 and say, can you review this before the closings in an hour? Because um, I, I might be in an advising session or something and I, I likely won't have time. <laughs> so if you can't get me or you can't get the writing center, at the very least, try and get a couple of other people to, to just read it over for typos before you send it. Um, that's it for my presentation. Um, I already introduced my colleagues, Jeff and Shannon, and just to remind people that we are available for uh, virtual advising, that would be with me, and you just have to email co-op at ecuad.ca in order to um, make an appointment, and I'll, I'll leave that slide up. Okay, I'll stop talking. Jeff, <laughs> any questions? Just pop them in the chat, okay? Just leave your microphones muted, but pop it in the chat, and Jeff can tell me what they are. No questions. I have no questions. Okay. Oh, I was really that thorough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, Gislaine, did you want me to um, to to pop uh, something into the chat? Um, oh yeah. How to get hired? I can do that right now. How to get hired and the resume builder. Absolutely. And how to get hired has a little bit of uh, info on uh, cover letters too. There's actually some info repeated over those two documents. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I see a question. Hang on. Okay, I see a question. When a company has a requirement of three years, but you haven't had enough experience, is there a way to convey that through the cover letters? Um, if you haven't had enough experience, I guess I would say, and Shannon may, might want to add to this, my advice would be don't pretend that you have. It, it all boils down to what you consider experience. You know, if you're working on class collaborative projects, say in design, like that BC Children's Hospital job posting, then that is experience. But if they say three years of professional experience and you have zero, then you can't really pretend that you have had that. You can refer to yourself as an emerging designer, just finished your degree, but you can't really say I have three years of professional experience if you don't. Shannon, do you want to add to that? Um, no, I agree with you. I, I, but I think that you can use your, your class projects as experience. So when you... Um, but you, yeah, because they'll catch you out on it and it happens. So um, you, you have to be honest in your, in your resume. So, and in really your career, you really do. Um, I see another question here. Could you show the slide between the two types of resumes from Anita? Uh, okay. So the two types of resumes, do you mean between CV? Oh, do you mean the, it's the resume examples? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go back to that slide while um, you guys that. are looking at the next question. <laughs> All my animation, sorry. <laughs> this is probably not the most. So, um, yeah. And somebody asked a question about um, being in foundation. Foundations. This answers yeah. it too. Yeah. Absolutely. And so this resume is a good one to um, have a look at, Esther, for really early um, educate early in your education. Uh, I mean, in foundation, you don't even know your major yet, but you have taken a creative process class, a studio class, you know, you can you can list your project work in there. That That's fine. And as you move through your education and you get more experience, then you're going to replace those. Uh, you know, and you're going to remove things like relevant coursework because it's you're going to have actual um, project experience that you can list instead. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip to the next resume just to show those those ones again. This resume is actually in the handout. Uh, this one is not, but I'm I'm going to try and add it uh, some more resumes. We're actually reviewing those resources. Um, hopefully in the spring. So um, this one I just made for the presentation. So there's a design resume. 
Um, okay, any other questions, Jeff? Um, if I have an award from an international competition, but I received uh, it when I studied in middle school, it, uh, it's kind of related, related um, uh, creative writing competition. Um, can I include it? I just um, answered yes in my, in my uh, in the chat. So I, I would say yes. And yeah. I do, I agree with Shannon, yeah. my director, um, because, and, and I would really look again at the job posting, particularly if writing is part of the job description. And I think it's great to demonstrate that you got an award for your writing skills. Anything else, Jeffy? Uh, not yet. Uh, there's a question here that Delvin is saying that she's, or they're having problems downloading. So maybe just email us and I'm gonna put our, I just co-op email to here. Private, uh, oh, here. privately to uh, send a, send an email to co-op. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Also, Jeff, if you could put the arts work um, URL there in the chat, um, those resources are available for download among others. There's other resources there um, on arts work on the resources page. Um, just scanning here. Okay, everybody's thanking me. You're very welcome. And don't forget that um, really you can take what I've talked about. You can look at the handouts. Um, don't be afraid to Google things like, you know, design resumes and, and kind of have a look at a scope of, um, of what's out there. And, um, you know, and then do a draft and then make an appointment to come and see us. And we can go through it together. And it's great if you bring the job posting because it, it really helps. You kind of need the job posting because you want to tailor it to that. Um, I see a question here. Will we be able to download this Zoom meeting as a video? Um, yes, eventually. Um, we're still working through the technicalities of this. So we're going to give the presentation tomorrow and then we're going to get it into a format that's postable and we're going to try to get it up in the arts work resources page by the end of the year. And then hopefully at some point in the spring, we're going to try and create a resources page on the website. So you don't have to go into arts work to get them. But right now we don't have that. Uh, we don't have permission. We're not allowed. Um, we don't own that part of the website. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's great. Thanks for your questions. I guess we can stop recording.